Hi friends, I am Dr. Chirag Adruja and today we discuss about part 2 of respiratory system. And today we discuss about inspection of respiratory system. So anatomical area of respiratory system. Before discussing inspection, the most important part of a respiratory system examination is anatomical area. Because when you, you have some abnormal finding, you can't describe it like a crepitation present in lower lung zone because lung zone terminology is useful for description of chest x-ray not for inspection of respiratory system so total about 10 area anteriorly 4 lateral 4 2 and posteriorly 4 so anteriorly it is a supraclavicular clavicular infraclavicular and memory or pectoral area so supraclavicular is above clavicular clavicular is at the cl clavicular up to lower border of first rib and infraclavicular is uh, up to third rib up to here and memory area is below third rib some textbooks also describe memory area in supramemory memory and inframemory but most of textbook describe anteriorly it is a supraclavicular clavicular infraclavicular or memory or pectoral area laterally is axillary and infraaxillary. Posteriorly, it is suprascapular, scapular, interscapular, and infrascapular. So, total 10 area. When you have any abnormality finding, you describe it in which anatomical area you have such abnormality finding. So, some general rules which is uh, for every system examination, this rule is common. So before start examination, wash your hand, introduction of yourself, take a consent of patient before starting a examination. If female patient, then you should have one female attendant with you. Always examination of any part of system is in well exposed area and in good light, possibly white, possibly sunlight. So this rule is common for all examination. Now in respiratory system, first we examine patient in supine posture and it tangentially at the side of patient foot and always and also from tangentially at the right side of patient. Then patient examine in sitting posture. Why sitting posture? Because back examination is equally important and it examination is done in sitting posture standing posture examination is also important but it is more important in abdominal examination for examination for uh, vitreoptosis and examination for hernia so now let's start respiratory system examination respiratory system is examination is divided in upper respiratory system and lower respiratory system we mostly forgot about upper respiratory system but upper respiratory system is almost equally important to lower respiratory system examination so now and upper respiratory system first we start from nose see here what is this this one is nasal polyp nasal polyp is seen in which respiratory condition so respiratory nasal polyp is seen in intrinsic asthma which is aspirin sensitive another one is vaginal granulomatosis there is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis also called abpa one is cystic fibrosis see here what is this this one is deviated nasal septum. Sometimes patient complain of difficulty in breathing and we find cause in lung parenchyma. But here cause is in upper respiratory system. And even a patient having a chronic upper respiratory obstruction, it develops pulmonary hypertension. So remember this one thing. Another uh, upper respiratory system examination is oral cavity. Oral cavity when it start from lips in case of patient having a chronic smoker and then patient lips having a stain of nicotine okay then teeth patient having a carrier's teeth or patient having artificial denture gums patient having a gum hypertrophy then you should always ask about phenytoin history phenytoin ingestion history and also lymphoma cheeks pharyngeal wall tonsil uvula get some example see here when you examine a patient oral cavity, I ask to patient say A and C posterior pharyngeal wall and tonsil uvula. Here see the first point in tonsil it is a bacterial tonsillitis. See here posterior pharyngeal wall. It is a granules. It is a granular pharyngitis. Also some post nasal drip we see here. We see here. It is one of the common cause for chronic cough. 
सी वॉट इज दिस दिस वन इज अ ल्यूकोप्लेकिया ल्यूकोप्लेकिया इज कॉमन इन अवर रीजन बिकॉज ल्यूकोप्लेकिया डेवलप बिकॉज ऑफ क्रोनिक मावा चुअर क्रोनिक टोबेको और क्रोनिक इरिटेशन ऑफ म्यूकोजा दिस इज अ प्री मेलिग्नेंट कंडीशन सो ऑलवेज एग्जामिन फॉर दैट साइनस इज ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम एग्जामिनेशन वेन पेशेंट कंप्लेन ऑफ हेड एक यू ऑलवेज सी साइनस इज नाउ लेट स्टार्ट अबाउट लोअर रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम वी डिवाइड लोअर रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम इन दिस फाइव पार्ट फर्स्ट वन इज अ साइज सेप एंड टाइप ऑफ चेस्ट अदर इज रेस्पिरेटरी मूवमेंट इन रेस्पिरेटरी मूवमेंट वी कवर टाइप रेट रिदम थोरेसिक मूवमेंट इक्वालिटी थर्ड वन इज पोजिशन ऑफ चेक अपेक्स इम्पल्स एंड स्किन सो नाउ लेट स्टार्ट वन बाय वन फर्स्ट वन इज अ साइज सेप एंड टाइप ऑफ चेस्ट नॉर्मल चेस्ट इज सीमेट्रिकल एंड इलिप्टिकल इन क्रॉस सेक्शन तो टू वर्ड रिमेम्बर हियर वन इज अमेट्रिकल सो चेस्ट इज बायोलेटरली ऑलमोस्ट सीमेट्रिकल एंड इलिप्टिकल इन क्रॉस सेक्शन सो नॉर्मल इट इज एंटेरो पोस्टीरियर दिस वन इज एंटेरो पोस्टीरियर दिस वन इज ट्रांसवर्स सो एंटेरो पोस्टीरियर टू ट्रांसवर्स डायमीटर रेशियो इज फाइव इज टू सेवन इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड हचिशन इंडेक्स रिमेम्बर दिस वर्ड हचिशन इंडेक्स इन नॉर्मल चेस्ट इज फाइव इज टू सेवन एंड ओवरऑल चेस्ट सेप इज इलिप्सोड ऑल कॉनिकल बट लिव इट वी रिमेम्बर इयर इज इलिप्टिकल इन क्रॉस सेक्शन now we see such abnormality of chest so first one is a flat chest when you give a pressure from above in normal chest it become flat <laughs> so anterior posterior to transverse diameter or hutchison index is 1 is to 2 so transverse diameter is almost double to anterior posterior diameter flat chest is seen in a lean and thin individual and some wasting disease or some patient having a congenital disease or patient having a some rickets or other abnormality or patient having a childhood chronic obstruction of nasal cavity by bilateral adenoids to so this one patient having a flat chest another one the common is barrel shaped chest we describe barrel shaped chest in our first part of video where we describe sign of copd that we, there we describe barrel shaped chest here anterior posterior to transverse diameter is ratio is 1 is to 1 so ap diameter anterior posterior diameter is increasing so in cross section chest looking as circular in shape so it's barrel shaped chest other finding in barrel shaped chest are ribs are more horizontal sub uh, sorry uh, sub costal angle is wide normal sub costal angle is 90 degree and it is more acute in male but in case of barrel shaped chest abnormality sub costal angle is increases uh, ribs are more horizontal accessory muscle are more prominent barrel shaped chest seen in case of emphysema and also is seen in physiologically in old age it is also cause it is developed because of senile emphysema also so it is a co more common in our area is because of copd and it is called emphysematous chest also third deformity is a pigeon chest what is a pigeon chest also called pectus carinatum or chicken breast here protrusion of protrusion of or forward displacement of sternum along with is costal cartilage attachment it develop pigeon chest so in cross section it look like triangular in shape pigeon chest mostly seen in patient having a rickets or some congenital anomaly the most commonly seen in rickets rickets patient another is a called funnel chest pectus excavatum or cobbler chest here here we see there is a uh, hollowness so it is also defined as excessive hollowness excessive hollowness of a normal hollow in every patient some hollowness is present in lower part of sternum but in case of funnel chest there is excessive hollowness so it is a some deformity it is a no clinically more significant but when such displacement is such high that this displace our cardiac structure or our heart that leads to some complication like palpitation this finding is also seen in marfan syndrome and also seen in straight back syndrome which is a more common will be which we describe in cardiovascular system it is also called pectus excavatum because cavity like develop and cobbler chest because it is occupational disease in cobbler when patient when cobbler 
having excessive pressure of shoes in lower part of sternum then this such type of deformity is also developed pineal cells also having a we can uh, divide it in according to grading of deformity so first one is a saucer third second cup and lastly funnel develop in this deformity so there is a hollowness in lower part of sternum then rickettic chest what is a rickets now what is main pathology in rickets so in rickets mainly rickets develop the main pathology is unduly softness of bone so bone is soft then when you give a pressure bone achieve a, another shape easily so most common deformity in rickettic chest is earlier we described pectus carinatum pectus excavatum and here what is this this one is harrison sulcus harrison sulcus develop because diaph when diaphragm attachment harrison sulcus develop in attachment of diaphragm so when patient take a deep breath negative pressure generated in thorax which leads to diaphragm pulls inward and bone is already soft so this sulcus is easily develop in case of rickettic patient then what is this this is rosary it's also called rickettic rosary looking like a mala so how can we differentiate scorbutic rosary and rickettic rosary scorbutic rosary is developed here it is here is a scorbutic rosary and it is a rickettic rosary rickettic rosary is because of vitamin d deficiency while scorbutic rosary is because of vitamin c deficiency in rickettic rosary bird like enlargement present at costochondral junction while in scorbutic rosary there is no any bird like enlargement because but it develop because of inward displacement of sternum so costochondral angle is more angulated because of displacement of sternum to backward while here sternum is forwardly displaced and so and scorbutic rosary is painful while rickettic rosary is painless earlier we described the back examination is more important so you why because of kyphoscoliosis patient develop restrictive lung disease so kyphoscoliosis is one of the cause for restrictive lung disease here is a kyphosis and here is a scoliosis when you see chest x-ray you can see easily here is a scoliosis of patient other type of chest we can describe all chest abnormality because it takes a lengthy our inspection part of video so we only see name like a uh, scaphoid chest seen in syringomyelia sealed chest seen in turner syndrome and noonan syndrome here is a nipple is wide wide space flail chest more than two rep fracture at two different sites produce a flail chest here it develop a paradoxical breathing which is more dangerous gutter chest is a gutter like uh, uh, gutter like in uh, central sternal area there is a fissure chest or the other is lr or wing or pterygoid chest uh, pterygoid chest mostly seen in uh, long or flat chest where uh, vertebral border of sternum is more prominent so it look like a winged other is a thinoid chest also called pretubercular chest there is a visoptic chest now second part is respiratory movement here first we describe about type of breathing normally in male patient abdominal abdominal thoracic type of breathing is present and female is thoracic thoracic abdominal breathing is seen so what is abdominal thoracic or what is thoracic abdominal breathing when you inspect a patient patient having a more movement of uh, thorax than abdomen it is called thoracic abdominal movement and while abdomen movement is more than thorax it is called abdominal thoracic of breathing now we describe about abnormality of type of breathing so in male patient when develop a thoracic abdominal breathing then that patient having a some pathology in abdomen so which pathology it is a because of ascites or hepatomegaly or some tumor or peritonitis develop such type of breathing abnormality while in female instead of thoracic abdomen develop a abdominal thoracic breathing then the pathology is in lungs so which pathology it is a pleurisy or pneumonia or ards pleural effusion etc develop 
एबडोमिनल थोरेसिक टाइप ऑफ ब्रीदिंग व्हेन एक्सेसिव नॉर्मल टाइप ऑफ ब्रीदिंग इन केस ऑफ मेल ओनली थोरेसिक ब्रीदिंग डेवलप एबडोमिनल सॉरी ओनली एबडोमिनल ब्रीदिंग नो थोरेसिक मूवमेंट देन दैट पेशेंट हैविंग ए सॉरी दैट पेशेंट हैविंग ए थोरेसिक पैथोलॉजी यस इन केस ऑफ फीमेल एक्सेसिव थोरेसिक मूवमेंट नो एबडोमिनल मूवमेंट देन देन पेशेंट हैविंग ए डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सब एबडोमिनल पैथोलॉजी नाउ सेकंड वन इज रेस्पिरेटरी रेट normal respiratory rate is 12 to 20 then how to calculate because when you stay the patient for calculating respiratory rate patient become conscious and nervous so respiratory rate is change you can say that patient i calculating your respiratory rate it also patient become conscious so you have to calculate by holding a patient hand and tell patient that i calculate your i examine your pulse and instead of checking a pulse you should check respiratory rate this is a better way to uh, calculating respiratory rate then what is abnormality of respiratory rate to increase the respiratory rate more than 20 it is called polypnea or tachypnea which is seen in physiologically in ex after exercise other is a cause like fever other is hypoxia what is the respiratory cause for tachypnea it one is first is pneumonia ARDS pulmonary embolism all are respiratory cause for tachypnea non respiratory cause are metabolic acidosis second one is bradypnea it is a respiratory rate less than 12 it's called bradypnea is seen in metabolic alkalosis narcotic drug overdose or some uh, endocrine pathology like uh, myxodem or hypothyroidism where bradypnea is present hyperapnea is increased depth of respiration is seen in metabolic acidosis and hyperventilation is increased depth as well as rate it is called hyperventilation it is also called kusumal breathing is seen in metabolic acidosis now normal respiratory rhythm is normal patient taking a respiratory inspiration it quite a rhythmic pattern but sub abnormality like kind stroke respiration it is a vexing venic type vexing waning type of respiration it is here we see hyperapnea followed by apnea so patient taking some hyperapnea then some period apnea then again this cycle is repeated so this one is a regular rhythmic kind stroke type of breathing why this type of breathing is developed because when patient having a hyperapnea this leads to co2 wash out and patient having a no co2 in body and co2 is a strongest and most important stimulator of respiratory center to so no CO2 no respiratory stimulation no respiration at all so respiratory rate is decreased in apnea gradually CO2 retention occur in body and this CO2 stimulates respiratory center it condition is seen in cardiac failure renal failure increased intracranial tension all this condition we see in a kind stroke breathing Kusumal breathing increases the rate as well as depth of respiration seen in case of metabolic acidosis. Another one is bios breathing. Here we see shallow breathing, normal shallow breathing, and in between there is apnea. It's seen in case of meningitis. In meningitis, we see bios type of breathing. Another one is ataxic breathing. There is a shallow breathing. There is a deep breathing, there is apnea, all runs individually, there is no any pattern. It is called ataxic breathing, which is seen in medulla injury. Well, what is the sign breathing? Sign breathing is patient taking patient having a normal breathing. And between some normal breathing, patient taking a deep inspiration. It's seen in nervous or depressive individual where patient complain, I can't take inspiration. And between two to three cycle, patient taking a deep inspiration that after patient satisfy and then gradually patient having a normal rhythm. Then what is apneustic breathing? It is seen in mid and lower points injury. Here it is a pause between inspiration and expiration. So an inspiration pause and an expiration pause is present. Pause is about 2 to 3 seconds also called gasping type of breathing. There are many other all breathing but other is a first lip breathing which we describe very well in our first part of video. So if you not see it first see that there is a first lip breathing seen in uh, emphysema or COPD catch in breathing here patient taking a deep inspiration after taking some deep inspiration patient develop pain because of pleurisy or pneumonia so it is seen in pleurisy or pneumonia so patient hold for some moment and then continues their inspiration cogwheel breathing is 
you seen in nervous individual it is characterized by interrupted type of breathing seen in nervous individual now other is a thoracic movement equality what is thoracic movement equality you see both side of lung both side of chest movement equality sometimes patient having a diffuse chest restriction like in emphysema or ankylosing spondylitis or sometimes patient they see develop disease to one side then one side movement is restricted or other side movement is increases thoracic movement equality we describe very well in our palpation part of video but here you remember that side movement decrease that side is this is this is side this one is rule okay the thoracic movement equality we describe in palpation part of video in which part we describe uh, causes of uh, diffuse restriction causes of uh, uh, no movement in one side causes of uh, wide decrease movement in one side decrease movement to other side okay third one is position of trachea see here clavicular head of sternomastoid is uh, prominent so it is called sternomastoid sign or trail sign by inspecting patient only inspecting patient you see this is prominence of clavicular head of sternomastoid it is called trail sign and sternomastoid sign it is seen because a patient having a this side lung collapse or fibrosis so trachea is pulled that side to so that side patient develop trail sign or sternomastoid sign or patient having a opposite side massive pneumothorax or massive hemothorax or massive pleural effusion then trachea is also shifted to opposite side so this one is called trail sign or sternomastoid sign apex impulse is more and clearly described in our inspection part of cardiovascular system or palpation part of our cardiovascular system but our respiratory point of view you should remember apex impulse shifted to opposite side when patient develop a pneumothorax or hydrothorax to that side and uh, same side apex impulse shifted to same side when patient develop fibrosis or collapse at that side another is a skin see here patient having a engorged vein or here is seen engorged vein here you see dilatation of vein because of superior vena cava obstruction another is a scar mark you see scar mark having patient having a past history of icd insertion you can also see pulsatile swelling in case of impyma nascent when impyma nascent is rupture sinus is developed and pustule the continuous pus discharge is also present you see edema in chest wall if edema develop in only one side then impyma rupture impyma rupture to third side or if you a patient having a diffuse edema in all over chest that seen in cardiac failure or very very here we describe all this finding this video is somewhat lengthy but i assure to you that video cover approximately 90% of more than 90% of 90% of your exam question of inspection part of respiratory system and how to speak this all finding in one line if we describe it later one in another video because it is more important in your exam so if you like this video please subscribe if you have any query or question regarding to this inspection part or any suggestion please comment i will definitely answer thank you thank you very much